I'm speaking with a couple of cool guys. They're scientists. They've got lots of credentials after their names. We have Dr. John McGlone. He's at Texas Tech. And we have Larry Novell. He's he's founded a lot of companies. And one cool thing was he was one of four to found Animal Biotech. That's pretty incredible. But we're diving into our cats and dogs that are having some issues. And one of the things that people are turning to are pheromones found in different products. And they're going to tell us about a lineup called Vitality Harmony Pet, and it's coming from Tevra Brands. But they come in all kinds of forms. There's collars, there's sprays, there's diffusals, there's e diffusers, there's even lickables. We started this talk about the P word, pheromones. And they talked a little bit about how it works on behavior. But the golden thing, the thing to really keep in mind is the science is showing that pheromones can impact, alter, in hopefully good ways, the physiology of the dog or a cat. And I can't explain it, but I know somebody who can. And his name <laughs> is Dr. John. Take it away, Dr. John. Yes. I, now, we, we sometimes behavior is referred to as a soul science. A soft so, science, yes. Yeah, it's really not a soft science, but some people believe it is. And they say, well, you think the dog is feeling this or thinking that, and I think it's thinking something. You can't really right. win that argument or discussion. But with physiology, when it changes the physiology, there's it's a very objective measure, and there's no argument about it. So, for example, when you use the rabbit pheromone that improves the stress level of cats and dogs on cats and dogs. For example, in one of our models, we played a thunderstand, a very okay. little thunderstand. And we found that dogs, of course, were, were afraid of that. So sure. They'll yep. shake and, and so on. And But we put heart rate monitors on them also, in addition to studying their behavior. Okay. And then we really knew what was going on. So for the dogs that had the control situation, some of those dogs, when the thunderstorm went off, would go on the corner and lay down, and you you don't know if they're stressed or not. You do, they're, Maybe they're hiding, maybe they look stressed, and if you measure their heart rate, you find that they're lying down, but the heart rate's very high. They're scared, right? Yep. Another dog, you spray the pheromone on it, and... The thunderstorm is going, and the dog goes over and lays down, but his heart rate isn't normal. And so we have shown in different models, loud noises like thunderstorms, you know, fireworks, transportation, not, especially when it's novel, you're not taking oh, yeah. the dog all the time to the vet or cat. It works for both of them. That the heart rate goes up in the normal animal that's stressed during the thunderstorm or the car ride or whatever it is. But with the, when the family's on, on board, it doesn't go up. So what you're saying is, you know, when we look at the behavior, you said soft science, but this is hard science. Yeah, the, the physiology validates the behavior. Yeah. Okay. So for the products that Tevra is selling, the, these types of molecules are the only ones that have been shown to change physiology of animals. That, you know, come on, guys, stop and pause on that. That's pretty friggin' amazing that, number one, we figured out pheromones. Number two, we can cross species pheromones. Yeah. And number some, three, some you have to come up with the testing parameters to be able to validate. And yes. I want to ask Larry, what do you think? Because you've been in this biz a while. You know, what do you think? What's your message you can tell to pet parents about when you're shopping for a product? What are you looking for? And I know on the Tevra page, there's like tons of studies and sure. they're they're independently reviewed. I mean, I used to work at Prevention Magazine and learned a lot about test methodologies. So how do you help people pick quality products that may just help their dog or cat? Sure. Well, there's more than one product and we have different products for different purposes. I like that. How John and I work together as a team John selects the pheromones, he likes the concentrations, and then we work together where I try to look at the molecules that John's come up with and come up with ideas of how they might be used. An example would be the rabbit pheromone. It's the only pheromone that's very volatile. So we're able to come up with a diffuser that doesn't require electricity. So John and I 
worth oh, the that's, candidate. Now, wait a minute. Let's just stop because I know there's a lot of uh, products out there you got to plug in. So right. I like that this one doesn't need an electrical outlet. Yay. And 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 it's the only one that, that can work that way because it's the only one that's volatile. Wow. And now, but you just, it, it not only has to be volatile, you have to make sure that it's still there when you want it. So you got to come up with a method of metering it out so that it's still there. Other things that John will come up with, he'll say, okay, these are senior chemicals. They work only through smell, but they're used in treats. Well, the, the nose is, the mouth is not a nose, but they're connected. But John will say things like, you've got to keep it in the mouth long enough for it to, so we come up with. Good Lord, this is amazing. I mean, this is a lot of work. Oh, yeah. It's a I lot mean, of fun work. I mean, I mean. I've written 27 pet books, but you guys make me look like pathetic, like I've only written a noun and a verb a compared to the science that you all have done. Don't you feel a little kind of cool about getting to do something that may save a pet's life? Let me talk with you, John. I mean, this is scary. We don't want our pets surrendered to shelters. We want our pets to be bona, bona fide or bone fide members of our family, and they need to feel happy. They need to feel safe. And what you're doing is making a life saving impact. Well, if you look at the reviews of some of these products on Amazon, every so many reviews, it, people will actually say, this saved our dog's life. Yeah. We were going to get rid of the dog, but this uh. solved the problem. And, you know, they, they recommended it to other people. So, you know, sometimes they have a very powerful effect on a dog or cat that has a certain problem. Mm -hmm. Now, if the animal doesn't really have a problem, then giving them the product, uh, you might not notice a difference, right? Uh, but if they have that problem, even if they have it periodically, these products will positively affect their behavior and their physiology in ways we can quantify. We can measure. I like that. Martin, can I answer that question also? Absolutely. Pipe in, John. I mean, go. I mean, Larry, go for it. The first flea and tick collar ever invented was invented by a name of man by the name of Jack Greenberg. He worked for Sardins. I invented oh. this second one, and I worked. Wait a minute, slow down, because I didn't hear that clearly. You invented the what? The second one. <laughs> okay. And and I worked on lots of flea and tick collars, lots of flea and tick spawns, lots of shampoos, lots of products that have to do with killing fleas and ticks. They all involve some risk to the animal. These products have no risk to the animal. And the opposite, they not only don't have a risk, they can save the animal's life. I don't have a product I've ever worked on that gives me more satisfaction than working on these products. It just and it, it is kind of confusing because it the mothership is Tevra, but the lineup is called Vitality Vitality Harmony Pet. Is that correct? That's correct. They're 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 brand names of the mothership Tavra. Okay, okay. So I know that insects, especially fleas and ticks, have been on the earth since dinosaurs, and they're very adaptive. And now we have this lineup. Tell me, where do you see the future of pets and science? We only have a minute left, so I want you both to tell me where do you see the future of science in pets. Because you guys are doing pretty good work now. I think it's a, a concern because there's a lot of products on the market to which there's no science. Yeah. That they, that they are do anything. And, and consumers have a lot of choice and they can't tell the difference in the store or online between a product that there's good scientific evidence that it works and a product that they just, somebody just made up. You know, yeah. And yeah. So I think your program is very critical to to try and sit through some of those. Well, I was an investigator reporter for 20 years. Best advice I got from an editor. If your mother tells you she loves you, check it out. So we live in a, a time of too much information and yeah. we need that sifter. And this is science backed product. Yeah. So I think that's what you're saying, right, Dr. John? Yes. And I think that when we apply science to animal behavior products, we imprint the efficacy of the product. Yes. And we stop wasting our money on stuff that doesn't work very well. I like that. How about you, Larry? What's your parting message to people? Because sure. we love our pets and we want them happy and healthy and with us. 
Well, I've, I've spent a lot of my life traveling over internationally. Mm-hmm. And in the United States, we have a highly developed pet market. That's not always been true in other parts of the world. Animals have been used for different purposes. Cats are used in the barn for rats. Dogs are used as watchdogs. And fortunately, that's changing. In most of the world, they're becoming, like here in the United States, part of the family. And I think the things that we can do that improve the behavior of the animal makes it more, makes the animals more readily accepted as part of the family. And the animals in other parts of the world can join join the happy lives that so many of our pets have here in this country. And that gives a lot of satisfaction. I, I really appreciate both of you being here today because we need to get the word out and we need to shop with a purpose and look for science back products. And thank you for letting explaining things so I could understand it too. Yeah. Um, but you know, I love my pets and I've been on a mission for the past 25 years to bring out the best in pets and their people. And these kinds of things are making a difference. So gentlemen, I thank you both for being on our show. Well, then thank you for doing what you do. Thanks for having us.